Patricia, welcome back to another BL Visual Novel game. And in today's video, we're gonna do part two of Dear Monster because I know it's been a long time if you look at it, you know, it's, it's been a long time, okay? I'm sorry. However, you know, somebody after such a long time commented on that video saying, could you make more of it? And as you know, I will make more of something if you ask me and I don't need to have lots of people. I just need to have one person who says, you know, this makes me happy. And then, you know, it makes me happy too. So I have been playing Dear Monster a lot. Um, however, I haven't recorded anything and it's been quite a while since I actually played it. So yeah, this person also asked if I could do the Momo route and uh, Momo is the uh, guy with the fox ears or the wolf ears or the, I don't know, the, the ears. <laughs> So we are gonna try and enter Momo's storyline and see what happens in there. Even though I'm very curious also to find out the other storylines. But you know what? We're gonna go for Momo. So let's get straight to it. Okay, so this is where we were. We were supposed to give an answer to somebody knocking on the door. Give me a second. I'm coming. It's not a good time. Couldn't it? Oh, who was knocking on the door again? Was it the unicorn dude? I think it was the unicorn dude. But you know what? Let's say that they can come in. Come on in. Give me a second. I'm coming. I stand up and open the door. It's Momo holding a silver platter. He smiles. A very pleasant smile. Oh, okay. So, so we did good. Hello, Mama. I avoid looking into his eyes. I have a feeling that whatever his familiar call is experiencing it in a small enclosed space would be bad. Oh, why so shy? Didn't you look at me quite intently just a while ago? Anyway, I'm sorry. I can't tell you if it was my idea to bring you something to eat. It was all Feren. 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 Um, thanks. And please thank him for me. By the way, what did you do to him? He's sitting in the kitchen all whiny about not knowing how to interact with humans and you not liking him? I made a joke about the mansion having a significant lack of grandfathers, but it probably sounded like I was blaming Fern for grandpa not being here. I didn't want him to be sad. Oh, never mind. I was just curious. Let's not concern ourselves with trifle things anymore. Are you going to eat your eggs? He pointed at the platter he put on my desk. There's an omelette, a few slices of bread and a glass of juice. I thank him again and take a bite. He watches me intently. It is pretty unwise to eat food from a stranger, don't you think? Especially someone who is not of this world. Mm hmm Hasn't your aunt ever told you stories about evil fairies and humans who've ventured too deep into the forest? Ah, uh, should I continue eating? Stare at Momo in horror? You know what? I trust you, Momo. I'm gonna continue eating. She probably did. But somehow, I don't think you'd put anything in my food. Oh, wouldn't I? What's stopping me? Um, fear, maybe? Did you just love... Do you consider yourself to be a threatening person? If so, I must disappoint you. No, I mean, Faden. From what I've seen, he seems like a very upright kind of unicorn. Not the kind who'd be happy for his guest to get poisoned. You guys coexist here, right? No matter how confident you seem, you probably don't want to get on his bad side. Hmm, true. Momo gets silent for a second and then laughs. Maybe you're not as defenseless as you look. To be honest, I'd much rather have you alive and well, but thinking you're untouchable might not be the best course of action for the unforeseeable future. Okay. His gaze shifts to the crystal ball. Is that the everyday prophecy ball? I was wondering where it disappeared. He presses the button. Nothing happens. He grabs it, shakes it a little, then presses the button again. It hates me ever since the party. I laughed at it for being useless in front of our guest. I suppose it broke all the way down because of shame. The ball shines with the light again. You will be saved from great hunger by a green giant. 
You didn't even try, did you? I know what the cook looks like. Thank you very much. And no rhyme? Give me another one. The great disappointment awaits you. And the great shattering awaits you. Yeah, right. <laughs> he looks at me. You see? Useless. I don't know. It seems to like you. I mean, you both seem like the type who loves to argue. Only if it's worth it. Don't rush with eating. He pats me on the head and walks away. Bye-bye. I finish my food and sit on the edge of the bed. I try to call the university, but can't get a signal. Does the barrier disrupt radio waves somehow? I'm going through the memories of all the books I've read trying to find some kind of reliable information on the supernatural. I don't even realize I'm rubbing my mmm until I feel mmm. I'm in a strange house with strange creatures. I'm not even sure it's entirely safe and my mmm wants attention anyway. Sometimes he just does not cooperate. I definitely shouldn't go for it here and now. Don't, 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 don't. No! 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 Why are you doing this to me? No, I need to censor it again. Gosh darn it. Why? Dude, why? Oh, man. Can I say anything? Okay, let me check. Yeah, no, no. I'm gonna... I, I, I need to censor this. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just sorry. I need to censor this. It's... Duh. Suddenly, the door jumps open. I jump and cover myself. I'm back. Oh, Faden, you decided to visit? He doesn't say anything, just smiles. His big blue eyes watching me. I'm afraid to move. Does he know what I was doing? The Unicars have some magical radar detecting the impure of heart? I suck at research. <laughs> Faden comes inside and pulls the sheets off me in a swift motion. Again, I need to sense this. I can't explain. He doesn't wait. He kneels beside me. It's censorship time again. Be right back. Okay, I need to tell you this. More people are walking into the room while they're doing the yibi jibis. I'm I'm back. I I don't know what I just witnessed. <laughs> Let's continue. I look at the door and sigh. It's still closed. I feel like a freaking pervert. I've just met those guys and, uh, and already used them as mm, material. Post mm, comes in strong. I feel my cheeks heat up. I jerk my head around looking for something to clean up. I didn't prepare tissues or anything. I've already made a mess of those sheets, so might as well use them to clean myself. After I'm done, I cramp them under the bed. I'll ask for new sheets later. Look at him all embarrassed. Yeah, I would be embarrassed too. But dude, I mean, you have some... You have some uh, very uh, interesting fantasies. Yep, this officially became the room of shame. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Go to the bathroom across the hall. I take a quick shower and dress into something clean. All my clothes look the same. I guess this is what I get for only bringing the acceptable stuff. I think I feel better if the you shall not pass t-shirt. <laughs> now what? Should I wander around a bit my by myself? Wait, how do I contact the guys anyway? Nope, they're probably not on gr Grinder. There's a note on the platter. I must have been starving if I hadn't seen it sooner. Each and every letter is written with precise elegance. The note says, bring the dishes back, will you, love? I'm not your maid, after all. The kitchen is on the right of the main hall. It doesn't say I have to go right away, but I don't really have anything better to do. So, yeah, let's bring back the dishes. Your mama told you that, right? I go to the main hall. There are doors on both sides of it. The note says on the right, but should I face the stairs or the front entrance? I go to one of the doors and put my ears to it. I lose my balance when it jerked open. <gasps> oh, hello. Hello, sir. You, you are quite big. Why are you creeping around my kitchen, boy? I have to look up to see the face of the person, or rather, creature speaking to me. He's a mountain, a green mass of muscles, barely dressed in anything. Yeah, he is. Uh, do I need to censor this? I don't know. Might need to censor this. 
Okay, sensitive time. I glance at the cloth covering his No way I would be like a hamster try. Why am I playing this game? I forgot. <laughs> they are very crude with their text. Um, hi, good morning. Or is it afternoon already? I brought back the dishes. Come on then. You could just walk in, you know. I wouldn't yell at you. It's a kitchen, not a bathroom. Not that I'd be mad if a cutie like you walked in me during a shower. Dude, dude, you're just mad. you just, you just mad. As he says that, his expression stays exactly the same. And I'm not sure if he's joking or flirting with me. Mm -hmm. Well, mister, I'm glad to hear that you wouldn't be mad because you don't seem like a guy to mess with. Call me Slachtor. I think it's Slachtor. Slachtor? Slachtor. Call me Slachtor. What do you mean? Because I'm an orc? Not all orcs are barbaric and violent, you know. He starts to chop an onion with a stoic expression. No, I wasn't talking about your race. I just meant that you could grab my head in one hand. Maybe I wouldn't though. Anyway, how did you like my omelet? I got some advice about toppings you might like from our one horned friends. It was delicious. I especially liked the green peas and feta cheese inside. I didn't recognize the mushrooms though. Ha! That doesn't surprise me at all. That was blood rush bolet. It doesn't grow here. I mean, in this world. It's called like that because of the stripe color. Some people think it's an aphrodisiac, but I guess it's just a bunch of mm hmm. Never worked on me. Didn't do anything for. Oh, so that's why! Oh, now I understand. Huh? I feel the fire on my cheeks. Does he know about the room of shame? I can't read him. He has this mean, angry looking face, but a calm voice. I mean, did you get mmm than usual after eating? And, and no, yes, I mean, yes, I know what an aphrodisiac is, but no, I felt normal, perfectly normal. Yep, nothing happened here. Nothing at all. I realize I'm talking too fast and shut up. Well, anyway, do you want anything else? Have you seen the mansion yet? Just my room and some corridors, I guess. There's a bunch of places you might want to see. Maybe you need a guide? Uh, you want to take me? Me? I would, but I have to cook for this bunch here. I can send them a message though. I'm sure Feyren would love to show you around and Momo wouldn't mind either. Hikmet would say he doesn't have the time, but he'd probably let you tag along with him in the end. And you can always go alone. Try not to die though. Now he's chopping white radish. Oh, okay. So we have promised to go with Momo. So we're gonna go with Momo. Hi, Momo. Okay, then. He touches his bronze bracelet and it buzzes quietly. Go to the hall. He should be there soon. Okay, I'm going. Soon I see Momo walking down the stairs. His steps are slow and I have a feeling he's enjoying the view from a higher ground. Well, well, you've missed me already. I must say, I'm flattered. I look into his eyes just for a moment, but it's enough to fill the air with the same strange energy glowing and pulsing between us. I swallow hard then stare at his right shoulder instead. Uh, it's not, I mean, do you have some time to show me around since I'm trapped here and all, and I thought I could at least explore for a bit? Hmm, I guess there's no harm in you knowing the mansion's layout. At some point, you'll have to navigate here without a guide after all. Who knows how long we'll have you staying with us? This is not helping. <laughs> a guided trip it is. I don't want to do boring things though. So come along, dear. I have an idea where to start. Mm -hmm. We go upstairs in the opposite direction from my bedroom. Momo stops before rainbow colored doors and opens them. We walk inside. Oh, mm -hmm. <gasps> The first thing I see is a vast blue sky. There is no way we are outside. The sky here is different, brighter. Apart from that, I'd have seen the roller coaster and the Ferris wheel behind the mansion. I turned around. 
The park continues with benches and some alleys to stroll around. There is no mention. The door we came through are now standing on their own, revealing the mansion's corridor through their frame. Momo closes them. Haha, it was worth it to come here just to see your expression. How is that even possible? Why does nobody listen to me? What did I tell you earlier, love? The answer is magic. In the mansion, we have a lot of room that are subspaces. Subspaces? Oh, just rooms that are bigger on the inside than on the outside. I mean, it's not simply resizing. You have the sky and everything. I think Theo took a chunk of terrain from somewhere and put it here. Or not. I don't really care. It's space-time magic. No fun at all. Ask Phaedom about the technical mumble-jumbo. I think about it as many worlds are inside the mansion. That makes sense, I think. But why an amusement park? Somehow, I don't think you and Grandpa rode the merry-go-round together. Not to mention Hikmat. I can't even imagine him near something so bright and noisy. You seem to forget that Theo had a family. Some fathers take their children to the zoo. Others create pocket dimensions with a theme park. I've had a hard time imagining Grandpa here. I mean, I don't know anything about him, but... It feels... Oh, I get you. You're right, love. This place was for the girls. Your aunt and mother. Your grandma, Fadim. Even I came here sometimes. Theo didn't have time back then. Grandma? Where is she? Is she... She died. How? Was she sick or... There's no point in just standing here, is there? Let's go. He ignores my questions and walks away without looking back. Maybe I should ask him about grandma later, but he doesn't seem angry or sad, just indifferent. Where are we going? Aren't you impatient, little pixie? Huh? Pixie? Like a fairy? Yes, they are adorable, but oh so curious. They never stop asking questions, even if they know it won't end well. Won't end well? Never mind. Can you not call me a pixie? I'm a guy too, you know. It's a bit... He smiles at me like I'd smile at a dog that can't find a ball in the grass only to discover that you never threw it. But of course you are. You are very manly. Nothing like a pixie, indeed. Here we are. Mm hmm And being suspicious. What is this place? An exhibition of my work, an atelier where all your dreams come true, a safe space where you can channel your inner self, whatever you want to call it there. You made all that? Clothes, jewelry, accessories. Why is it so hard to imagine me using a needle and thread, maybe melting down some precious metal to put in a mold? What about the crystal balls then? Someone to chat with? Ah, oh, unfortunately, that is not the right guess. There are merely containers for carefully prepared glamour spells. You can also find little extra various scents and voices, but I wouldn't recommend them. They're tricky to get rid of. Glamour? Like changing your appearance? Exactly. An instant transformation spell, so you'd know what it is. Well done. Uh, I, I used to be into fantasy, like really into read tons of books a long time ago. Hmm, what made you stop? Life, I guess. There were so many things to learn, so many things to do. I just didn't have the time to waste anymore. Oh, I see. This is a little unexpected. You and your grandpa might be more similar than we thought. So anyway, is that your specialty? Glamours? Oh, you could say that I'm good at wearing masks. I don't need glamours for that, but it's a decent way to remind myself of what I was going for at a certain point in time. To, shall I say, preserve the past, for example. He grabs a jar from behind the counter. It illuminates with purple smoke. Version 178, the pretty boy. Huh? What? What, 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 what's happening? He opens the jars and the smoke envelops him. Oh my good lord! Hello, pretty boy. I used it some time ago, then decided it doesn't suit me. What do you think? Ah, I think you look better with more abs. I like it. Well, we're gonna say, I like it. 
Is that so? Maybe you want to try something on. You could get dizzy from glamour. So let's wait with that. But maybe we could try that hat over there. It'll do wonders for your eyes. Isn't that a woman's hat? Perhaps you could say it matches a typical more feminine type of clothing. But don't think that matters, do you? Um, well, no, not really. I'll wear it. I don't know. I think I'd feel more comfortable trying something else. No offense. I'm not a cross <laughs> You know what? Let's wear that hat. I put the hat on and look at myself in the mirror. It actually looks good. It even somehow fits my outfit. And how do you feel? I, I like it. I don't know if it fits me, but it's not bad. Not bad at all. Well, of course, I chose that for you. We will make a cover girl out of you yet. I put the hat away and stare at him. Mm-hmm. C cover girl just something i've seen on tv however tell me love do you always do exactly as you're told um, what if i picked a pink dress instead would you still have worn it but that hat did look good yes it did but considering how uncomfortable you look when you were putting it on i'd say it took a toll on you why not simply refuse i, I don't know I guess I didn't want to offend you, since you're so nice to show me around. I didn't want to do anything to make you dislike me. Well, it seems we'll have to work on that confidence of yours. Changing the subject. Why is this place here anyway? I mean, in the amusement park? Oh, the girls used to come here and force me to make dresses for them. I wonder if Faram and I spoiled them rotten. We sure tried. They came here a lot? Even my aunt? Yes, that one was specifically hard to please. Everything had to be exactly as she described, or else. And to answer your question, the atelier is not exactly here. I added another entrance just for them and thought we could go through the park. What were they like? My aunt back then and, and my mom. His eyes become foggy as he dives into memories. Charming, funny bloody clever i have an idea love let's go to a place they loved playing in mm -hmm. he leads me across an alley there's a building with a zombie castle signboard on it uh-oh when we come inside i laugh at the cheap halloween like decorations paper spiders hang from the ceiling and a cardboard witch lurks behind the corner oh spooky I forgot the setting are still set on low. Let's bring back the moving body parts and the shadow monster, shall we? After all, you seem to be looking for something more exciting. Huh? Wait. Okay, jump scare. Oh dear, you look so pale. Maybe you need a blanket and warm cocoa. Perhaps a bedtime story? That was freaking terrifying, but... Being with you made me feel safe. Oh my God, Momo, the babysitter. I'm glad you found your true calling. I need to sing it down. I think I'm going to be... Okay, okay. You know what? That was freaking terrifying. But being with you made me feel safer. He narrows his eyes at me. I'm not your babysitter, dear. Neither am I someone you can lower your guard around so easily. But how about we continue the tour? Any requests? I want to know more about Grandpa. So he's a wizard that lives with magical creatures. But what else? Does he look like Gandalf too? I'd say more like Bilbao. Wait, you know what I'm talking about? Love, I've studied human behavior and culture for a long time. And social media made it embarrassingly easy. I don't even have to leave the mansion to observe you anymore. You all seem to love displaying the most insignificant details of your mundane lives now. How about we go to Theo's study? I think I might give you a better idea of him. All right. Oh my God, he, he really gave us a diss. I nod and walk out of the park. Mama takes me in front of another wooden door. No different than the other ones we've passed. Oh, we walk inside and I trip over something. Momo catches me. I look down and see a rock, a rug ripped in half. The whole room is a mess. Books are shattered all over the place. The desk has a deep scratches on it. And some bookshelves are broken into little pieces. What happened here? Did a hurricane pass through? Ah, uh, yes, indeed. A hurricane has sharp fangs. 
doesn't know how to control his anger and he is overall not too bright. I have to handle that, but there is no rush. Also, I'm not in the mood. How do you know it was a dragon? I have no ways of knowing what happened in the mansion. Also, the whole room smells like the pitful lizard. Really? I don't smell anything or maybe something, but it's very subtle. Well, for once I envy a limited sense of smell. For me, it's like he left his sweaty pants in here and I don't fancy continuing the experience. You're not going to learn much about Theo now anyway. Let's come back after somebody cleans this mess. Wait a second. I notice that next to the desk lies an open handwritten journal. I take it with me. A souvenir? Something like that. I can take it, right? Is that my grandpa's writing? He glances at the notebook. Yes, although I wouldn't put much hope in that thing. You'll see for yourself. Can we go now? Every second here is a test for my stomach's patience. We move on and Momo leads me again. Momo? Yes, love. Can we talk about the familiar call? Ah, yes. A familiar bond is a specific type of relationship where a magical creature serves as a power generator and in return, a wizard can perform some new parlor tricks. Not exactly worth it, don't you think? Oh, I see. Somehow I expected it to be something more. Is that really all there is to it? Hmm, maybe not. I'd say it's neither bad nor good. It has the potential of being highly beneficial for both parties, but things can get problematic. We walk through another door and end up between tall, dense trees. It's not the typical forest I can see glowing butterflies flying fabulously above dew-sprinkled grass. The trees look ancient and the smell here reminds me of cotton candy. Another subspace. It's amazing. Aren't you a smart little boy? He ignites his pipe. Anyway, as I was saying, the familiar bond can help both the creature and the wizard in many ways. The problem is that it is an extremely invasive agreement, as they are connected forever. We go deeper and deeper into the woods. Imagine trusting someone with your life, showing them all of yourself. How can you be sure they won't use it against you? Would you give somebody a part of your soul? Better question. Would you accept someone's whole being into yourself without judgment or hesitation? Without that, the familiar bond would work anyway, but it would be toxic and destructive. Could you trust somebody like that? I... Yes, I think I could. You shouldn't. He disappears. I turn around, but he's nowhere to be found. I realize that I've lost track of our position. Where's the door? Where's Momo? He wouldn't leave me here, would he? Momo? Momo! I take a big breath, trying not to panic. How big is this place? I can't even see the edge of the forest. I'm going in a straight line. If I don't change direction, I have to get somewhere. How big can this place be anyway? Apparently big enough for me to get lost. I shouldn't even be here. I should be in med school, unpacking my stuff and preparing for orientation. Stupid. I'm so stupid. Why did I come here? Because I was hoping for what? That I would find a familiar member here who cares about me? Grandpa's not even here. And I can't find my way back. I can't find myself. Is this place where I die? I trip over something. But before I can fall flat on the ground, a strong hand grabs my arm, steadying me. Hey, Momo. Do you understand now? Others can hurt you just because. Momo, I'm so glad you're here. The heck, Momo? What was that supposed to be? Okay, 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 okay. You know what? We're going to be all lovey-dovey because we want Momo. Glad? You're glad? Is this the only thing you have to say? I'm wasting my breath talking to you, am I not? No, I understand. Don't trust anyone. You did come back, though, didn't you? He pats me on the head and sighs. Come on now. I'll take you back to your room. This time... Try to remember the path. I sit on the edge of the bed, trying to eat the sandwich I took from home. After a long journey and sitting all day in my backpack, it's quite... Mm, I hate that word. Maybe I should ask Slachter... Slachter... For something else. Ooh, what's happening? Suddenly, the cactus on the mantle starts glowing. The heck? Are you gonna blow up? 
throw it out of the window. Wait and see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait and see what's going to happen. Because if it blows up, it blows up. The light centers itself at the top of the cactus. It gets brighter and a pretty red flower blooms out. Finally, the light fades, but the flower remains. The air fills with a delicate vanilla smell. Whoa! A familiar voice comes out of the flower. Hello again, human. It is not easy to venture into the unknown, especially, at least at the moment. You cannot return. And while I can't say I remember how it feels, I understand the concept. Therefore, I thought about the most appropriate way to welcome you. Um, thanks. It's pretty... It smells good too, though. And this was it? Really? Okay. Let's not be unnice, right? This is not a two-way communication method. I cannot hear you. But you responded. Anyway, try not to kill your cactus. I've wasted too much time on this encounter already. I need to get back to work. Um, maybe you can come over and show me how to properly take care of that flower? What? Just use your technological glowing box. I don't have time for that. Ha! You can't hear me! That was a mistake. Hikmet? Hello? The line goes silent. I guess this is the end of the weird flower call. I feel the corners of my mouth lifting. Hikmet may act like he doesn't care, but now I know better. Mm-hmm. I walk around the room, trying to figure out where to put my stuff. I never thought I'd say it, but there's too much room for books and not enough for clothes. I glance at the journal I took. I'll check it out later. Soon it becomes dark outside. I've been here for a day, but it feels much longer. My whole world, reality itself, it all changed. Fantasy creatures exist and magic is real. A long time ago, I would have jumped with joy till my legs couldn't move anymore. But that person is long gone, isn't he? I have different goals now, different dreams. I glance at my phone. I still don't have a signal. I wonder if my aunt called. She thinks I'm at university where I should have gone. I hear a rumble downstairs. It's a welcome distraction. Maybe I should check it out? Okay, so this is where I'm gonna end part two. So what did you think of part two? And should I make a part three? But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I say, miss you, love you, bye-bye.